Hey everyone, so today is the official launch of Dragon's Dogma 2. However, leading up to this, there has been so much discourse over the microtransactions in this game that I wanted to talk about outside of the numerous performance and optimization issues this game is currently dealing with across all platforms, whether it's on PC or console. At the time of recording this, Dragon's Dogma 2 is currently sitting on Steam with mostly negative reviews, and even Capcom has put out an update responding to all the comments from the community, including the paid DLC items. I've seen a lot of misinformation being spread about the microtransactions that's being offered on the Steam page to numerous negative reviews left on Steam of people leaving their distaste for it. This can often be fueled by emotional reactions rather than facts as we've clearly seen. This isn't exclusive to gaming, it mirrors broader societal trends where people may prefer pushing narratives that fit their preconceived notions. In the context of gaming, well, Dragon's Dogma 2, the negative reactions are amplified by concerns over the pay to win model, which I've seen numerous of Steam reviews include. In this Steam review, it said, 12 years have passed since Dragon's Dogma 1's release. It was genre defining, leaps and bounds ahead of its time. If there was anything Capcom has learned, it's how to become predatory, how to leech people for their worth. $70 game I could support to ensure fair play for a good game. However, when you also attach bloatware, buy more crystals, and pay to win gifts to a single player game, I cannot in good faith support that. The game is also linked to their cloud servers for $1.99 to change what you look like. Let that set in $2 to change your appearance. Something that should be free and has zero impact on Capcom. $2. Sure, you may be able to get a lot out of in this game, but it treats you like a child. Candy Crush monetization. I won't spend my money to be treated like that, even if it's available in game too. Stay away from this game with a 30 foot pole. Do not support this in the industry. This is predatory and horrific to see how far from grace you capitalist pigs have fallen. And by God's green earth, I hope you fail and crumble like you deserve. In another negative Steam review, this person had this to say. I didn't play the first Dragon's Dogma, so I wasn't really following Dragon's Dogma 2 development until I heard about it a few weeks before release. That said, it didn't take me long to pour over all the early access previews from reviewers and the likes and I was stoked to try it out. Then after pre-purchasing the deluxe edition, I went to install it today and saw a whole page dedicated to its microtransactions in the store. How do you even have the nerve to put any kind of microtransaction in an already fully priced single player game? It's so wild to me. This shameless, money grubbing, capitalist investor direction that big studios are going now will be the death of them. I only booted up this game once so I could leave this review. Anything that this game could have been is soured by the wholly unnecessary disgusting microtransactions. Sad really, I was stoked to play it. Guess I'll just play Stardew Valley while I wait for better studio games like No Rest for the Wicked and Elden Ring's expansion. Pitiful. Don't be a sheep. Don't support this type of monetization, especially given the context of it being a fully priced single player game. Do not support microtransactions like this. However, the items available through microtransactions are also obtainable in-game through player effort. The critiques expressed may sometimes overlook the distinction between convenience and necessity here. People speaking in absolute as though it's factual, making it seem like these are exclusively paid items and it's pay to win. It's definitely not. Look, I can understand why people, myself included, don't want to see things like this in our single player games because it feels so unnecessary and the impact it can have on the game's experience or others moving forward. While they offer a revenue stream for developers and publishers, they can also lead to predatory practices which we have seen from numerous of games, not just single player games, but live service games or the like. The balance lies in implementing microtransactions in a way that should respect players' choice and efforts like Helldivers too. Offering the choice without compromising the core game experience or progression, it's a slippery slope to go down. I get the concern for it in single player games because if you give them an inch, they can take a mile. But just in the same vein here in regards to Dragon's Dogma, neither are we having to buy it. These are all items you can find or earn in-game by fighting enemies, completing quests, looting chests, 
and other activities. I think microtransactions, unfortunately, are a thing that's going to stay whether we like it or not as a consumer. But there's no reason to go and spread misinformation as though these are exclusively paid items. Still, player feedback is vital for a game, but it should be approached with constructive criticism and dialogue between players and developers that can lead to improvement in game designs and how microtransactions are implemented. I understand people's frustration with the game's poor performance from those with mid to high end rigs to those on console as well. As for me personally, I've only put about 5 hours into the game and made it to the area where the vast majority had the same performance drops. Though outside of this, I've been having a good time with the game and will continue to play it. Thankfully, I haven't had to deal with any crashes either. Now look, I get it with the technical issues, but the microtransactions though, it's a bit silly to me seeing all these people complain about it and then on top of the misinformation being spread about the game. I think it's crucial to recognize the autonomy players have in choosing how to engage with the microtransactions. Some may opt to purchase the items out of convenience or to enhance their enjoyment of the game, while others prefer to earn them through gameplay. This choice should be informed meaning that players are aware of what they're buying and its, and its impact on their game experience. Developers should have a responsibility to design their games and monetization strategy in a way that respects this and avoiding manipulative tactics that coerce spending. In wrapping up, Dragon's Dogmas 2's launch has certainly been a roller coaster, stirring up a mix of excitement and controversy regardless of whatever side you're on. Amidst debates over microtransactions and performance issues, it's essential to step back and look at the bigger picture. The game, much like any other, offer a world of adventure and challenge, with or without extra purchases. It's about the choices we make as gamer, whether to spend our money for a bit of a shortcut or to journey through every nook and cranny the game has to offer on our own. Remember, at the end of the day, it's our shared passion for gaming that brings us together, not the differences in how we choose to play. So whether you're diving into Dragon's Dogma 2 for the epic battle, the rich storyline, or just to explore its vast open world, let's appreciate the adventure for what it is. Let me know what you think of this in the comments below and consider subscribing to the channel for more. And as always, thanks for watching.